Some things in life are inevitable, even ones we may not want to face. But how we prepare is important for easing the potential burdens that may accompany these things. We're the easing factor here to help you in many of these things, providing the relevant information on much of life's impactful issues. From processing a death report to, well, the reality of COVID-19 in our country. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine, where we provide you with information to make much of the things you do easier. I'm Theodore Henry, here with you until this short half hour ends. So let's start right now. Jamaicans at home and abroad celebrate the spirit of independence. Participate in the Spirit of Independence competition by decorating your surroundings with vibrant and creative displays of the Jamaican national colors. Numerous prizes will be awarded under various categories this year. These include Best Decorated Town Center, Best Decorated Business Place, Best Decorated Government Office, Best Decorated Private Residence, Best Diaspora Community Celebration, and Best Media Celebration. Persons interested in entering the competition should submit six photographs, three showing the outside and three of the inside of the building or display area. The photographs are to be submitted via email by August 3 to jamaicafestival at jcdc.gov.jm. Resilient and strong, let's celebrate Jamaica 58. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, July 22. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the states of public emergency have contributed to a 13% reduction in serious crimes across the island for the first six months of the year. Mr. Holness made the disclosure in Parliament Tuesday as he sought a three-month extension of the 10 SOEs currently in operation on the island. He says crime statistics for the period January to July 18 show that the special security measure assisted in reducing murders, shootings, rape, robberies, and break-ins. Through the use of this particular tool, this particular measure, we have managed, Mr. Speaker, to cauterize the spread of violence and crime in, in, in the terms that we have become accustomed we are flattening the crime curve in Jamaica. Since the imposition of the state of emergency in St. James, the parish recorded its lowest murder rate in 17 years. Up to July 19, the tri-parish states of emergency, encompassing St. James, Westmoreland, and Hanover, saw a 24% reduction in murders and 25% dip in shootings. The security measure has yielded similar success in Clarendon, St. Catherine, and the St. Andrew South and Kingston East Police Divisions. The SOEs operating for the past 33 days in the Kingston West and Central Police Divisions have also recorded marginal reductions in murders and shootings. Nine persons have been arrested and charged, 51 persons remain in custody, while a firearm and 13 rounds of ammunition have so far been seized. It is clear that the SOEs work, that in all instance, we can say without question that lives have been saved. 48 of the 63 members of parliament agreed and voted in favor of extending the states of public emergency. Jamaica now has a revised national action plan to eliminate child labor as well as a finalized light and hazardous work list. This after the labor ministry partnered with the United States Department of Labor and the International Labor Organization, ILO, to prevent the exploitative employment of children. Minister of Labor and Social Security Mike Henry says this takes our nation one step closer to eliminate child labor. There's a uniqueness of child labor in the different parishes in Jamaica, Mr. Speaker, and this was taken into consideration as we targeted the root cause of child engagement in illicit work. Minister Henry was making his contribution to the sectoral debates during Tuesday's sitting of the House. He also announced that Jamaica was the first country in the Caribbean to participate in the child labor risk and identification model. The model, which is expected to be completed by September, will be used as a representative tool to address the issue of child labor. 
Justice Minister Delroy Chuck tabled a bill in Parliament yesterday to repeal the Dogs Liability for Injuries by Act of 1877 and replace it with legislation that provides civil and criminal liability for dog owners. This follows a national outcry for the existing act to be amended, as it had no provision for criminal sanctions for the negligence of persons whose dogs attack others. Minister Chuck says it will now be the responsibility of the dog owners to take the necessary precautions to protect the public. After the surge of incidences, I gave a public undertaking to address the existing anomalies in the law. We hope to see no more reports of dog injuries, but in the event they happen, I want Jamaicans to know that the Justice Ministry has taken the steps necessary to ensure redress under the law. Under the proposed amendments, a dog owner is defined as the person who occupies premises where a dog is kept, has custody and care of the dog when the injury occurred, or who caused the dog to be in the public place where the injury occurred. Traffic congestion and road crashes in the corporate area are expected to be significantly reduced after Tuesday's official opening of the South Camp Road Improvement Project. The $3.8 million US dollar project took one year to complete. It was managed by China Harbor engineering company Czech through a joint venture agreement between the National Works Agency and the Jamaica Defense Force, the JDF. Works include the relocation of the JDF's main entrance to Cannonball Gate, the widening of the road to four lanes, and the relocation of utility poles. Security equipment as well as water and sewer mains were installed and a monument erected at the JDF's Cannonball Gate. At Tuesday's official opening, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the project was part of a larger government program to improve the island's road network. This was proposed as a small project that could have a big impact given the high levels of traffic and congestion in this section of Camp Road and the vicinity. There were too many crashes here and uh, it was clear that the Contributory causes relate to the road layout, which resulted in not only accidents, but insufficient queuing space for cars waiting to enter up Park Camp through the main gate. Local Premier League footballers will be among the first set of sports practitioners to become part of government's new athletes management system and registry. Sports Minister Olivia Grange made the announcement last Tuesday during her sectoral debate presentation in the House of Representatives. Minister Grange said initial steps had been taken to establish a registry similar to that of the e-registry in the entertainment industry, which could better assess the needs of athletes as they emerge from COVID-19. I appeal to athletes, coaches, and other stakeholders in the sports sector to sign up to the registry. We have already received names and TRN of all the players in the Premier League clubs, thanks to the president of the Premier League Association. He has ensured that that information has been sent to the ministry. She says the Athletes Management System and Registry will assist in the development of policy and programs and will help to calculate the contribution of sports to national development. And finally, Residents of Portobello in St. James are now benefiting from an upgraded community center. It was refurbished at a cost of $4.7 million and officially opened last Thursday. The upgrades were done as part of the tourism product development company TPDCO's Spruce Up program. It was executed in partnership with the Portobello Citizens Association and Member of Parliament for St. James Central, Heroy Clark. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the community centre will be pivotal to facilitating personal and professional development courses offered by the TPDCO and Jamaica Tourism Centre for Innovation, JCTI. This is in keeping with the Ministry's efforts to develop local communities as part of plans to diversify Jamaica's hospitality product through community tourism. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. You've asked for it, and now it's here. The Jamaica Information Service has updated its mobile app. It's easier to navigate, loads even faster than before, 
talking about top speed, operates seamlessly across platforms, and we're a creative bunch, so it's much easier on the eyes. Now you have quick and easy access to new stories, television and radio features, and a variety of photos right at your fingertips. And you'll get push notifications when new content is uploaded. Download the app on your Apple and Android devices now and get news you can use. Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica on the go. There are things in life that are hard to accept but must be faced, including dealing with the death of a loved one. We want to help you make one step in that experience much easier. How to process a death report to the authorities. Here's some information on that from the Administrator General's Department. Yo, Kevin, what's going on? You don't play ball with them? Yo, you know, see, I think happened to me the other day, my youth. Have me a way, I'm never gonna lie to you. How oh, um. You know, see, I'm stressed out and I grieve. You know, my brother John? Yeah. You know, see, the man say I'm sick. And we came to the hospital. And the man was dead, so. Dead left him daughter. No will. Yeah, and him two daughter, them, because Ashley are nine and Gabriel are 13, so we really don't know what to do. Boy, sorry for hearing that, you know. You never have no will. Yo, yeah, I just said that already, man. You man not left no will. If they left a will, would I know what to do? I really don't know what to do. So you never have house, car, bank account. You must at least NHT contribution. Yo, yeah, if I tell you the truth, my brother very secretive. So I really don't know. I just know the facts say he's a teacher. And I know them pay him through the bank, so I would have a bank account. I know same the buy a house last year. The car where I have, I never know if I feel. So I really don't know. That may I say, if in the left I will, would I really know where I'm or what to do? But we really don't know what to do. No, I'm here upon the radio still. Administrator General's Department deal with them matter then. You know? Administrator General's Department. Uh, what them do really? What, what them really do? Well, the government office, man. Them, whenever people dead without will and them have kids under 18, them, them deal with the assets. Say, so say, Administrator General's Department, yeah. them deal with them thing there? Push for the Administrator General's Department there. 12 Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, but I really like to go down there still and find out from them what they can do because I tell us that we really don't know what to do. I tell you the truth. Follow them play some ball, man. We follow, follow you go down there tomorrow. Ah, respect. That's right. If someone dies and did not leave a will, leaving children under the age of 18 years old and have assets such as property, bank accounts and motor vehicle, you must report the death of the person to the Administrator General's department. Good morning, gentlemen. How may I help you? Hello, good morning. I have a situation. I hope you can help me. My brother died last week, and I don't know what to do. Did he leave a will? No, he didn't leave a will. OK, I'm going to ask that you complete this document for us. To process the report of a death, you will need to complete a form of particulars witnessed by a justice of the peace or a notary public. You also have to submit an original death certificate, proof that you're related to the deceased, for example, birth certificate, marriage certificate, proof of assets such as bank passbook, land ownership documents, share certificates, motor vehicle documents, insurance policies, certificate of deposit. You will also need to provide a small sum towards administration expenses if no cash is left by the deceased. Before reporting a death, you can visit our offices for further information. In Kingston, third floor at the Office Center Building, 12 Ocean Boulevard, or call us 922-183023. You can also visit our Western office at the second floor of the National Housing Trust Building at 42B Union Street, Montego Bay, St. James. Telephone 630-4261. Our website is at www.agd.gov.jm. That's the Administrator General's Department, securing your legacy. Sickness is another of the many inevitable things we face in life. 
Luckily, our healthcare system reshapes and advances itself continuously to deal with this reality. Here's the latest addition to one of our widely used healthcare facilities. Jamaicans and other people from the Caribbean region, indeed visitors from around the world who may require cardiovascular treatment and care, can expect the best right here at home. The government of Jamaica has been on a mission to retool and modernize the health sector. The University Hospital of the West Indies is among the health facilities undergoing transformational changes to keep abreast of the latest in healthcare technologies. What we want to deliver to the people of Jamaica is a state-of-the-art facility that will enable us to provide all the healthcare needs of our citizens. It's important that as a country, we are able to provide that advanced and higher level of care um, that is needed when some of the most complex medical con conditions requiring expertise present to us. In keeping with the hospital's strategic plan and vision, several new developments have been taking place. Among them is the establishment of a cardiovascular interventional suite with state-of-the-art equipment. The suite of equipment costs two million US dollars, while another 51.5 million Jamaican dollars was spent on construction and infrastructure improvement. This is an indication of a desire to keep pace with advances in the technology that's around to ensure the delivery of quality care. The project, which began in 2018, was established through a partnership involving the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Culture, Health, Arts, Sports and Education, Chase Fund, and the National Health Fund, as well as international partners, Philips International and International Medex. It's an amazing achievement we should be, in a very consistent way, strive to always be on the cutting edge, given our mandate as a regional body to deal with the capacity building mandate that we have. This modern facility now available at the University Hospital enables specialist clinicians to perform minimally invasive tests and procedures to diagnose and treat some of the most complex cardiac and vascular interventional cases. We have what we call the biplane or dual interventional suite, but what we have done is combine that with echocardiogram within the same suite or an ultrasound. We also have within that suite what we call a, an anesthetic machine or ventilator that can put the patient to sleep. And we have continuous ECG monitoring. So the combination of equipment combined with the most important, certainly the, the, the interventional, the dual biplane system, allows us a wider range of diagnosis and treatment for the patient with the highest degree of accuracy. It is a multidisciplinary suite. As such, it is equipped for cardiologists, interventional radiologists, vascular surgeons, and cardiothoracic surgeons. Hospital administrators are targeting a gamut of procedures to be performed routinely in the amount of about 50 cases per week. Most are expected to be patients affected by various heart conditions. But they also come with um, diseases of the brain, possible strokes, possible abnormalities of the vessels in the brain. Um, they also come with abnormalities of the peripheral vascular tree, um, blockages in the legs, you know, difficulties in the aorta. And so really, a lot of the care will speak to cardiac disease, vascular disease. The suite also has the capacity to deal with conditions such as renal disease and cancers. A number of emergency procedures were among the first set of cases dealt with after the facility went operational in the first half of 2019. We have done coronary angiograms, we have done percutaneous coronary interventions with stenting, and we've done cerebral angiograms, looking at the vessels to the brain. We have done um, aortic stenting. These and other procedures taken on at the interventional suite are making a mark on efforts to tackle the monster of non-communicable diseases and indeed saving lives. A third of all deaths in Jamaica, between 18 and 20,000 deaths, die from cardiovascular disease. The Global Health, the Health and Lifestyle Survey says 
that one in three Jamaicans are hypertensive, which speaks directly to this kind of condition or series of conditions which requires an intervention suite. Nearly 50% of those who are hypertensive are unaware that they are. And it's clear that we have the human capacity to do a lot. Opportunity is also created from this interventional suite for the UHWS Faculty of Medical Sciences to not only teach, but also put all the innovative healthcare theories into practice. Looking at the intervention suite in operation, you will recognize it immediately as a microcosm of what we're trying to achieve in the Faculty of Medical Sciences. If you see the unit in operation, every peg knows its particular hole and it is working like a machine. As the funders of healthcare in many instances, we are willing and able to support projects that add value. And I'm confident that this is indeed a very good project. So we at the NHF, we are committed to partnerships and this one really has led to a good outcome. It doesn't end there. The blueprint for further development at the hospital has in its design its first six-story tower, as well as other technologies to come, including upgrading of its MRI suite and the delivery of PET imaging. Motorists, when driving on the road, here are some simple reminders. Look out for and extend courtesy to all road users. Give plenty of room to pedestrians, especially in wet weather. Drive slowly, no bother wet them up. Slow down when approaching a pedestrian crossing or school and always be prepared to stop. Remember, a school zone is a 30 kilometer zone. Cut your speed. Drivers of large and slow-moving vehicles should always keep in the far left hand of a dual carriageway. Keep it simple. Drive left and pass right. These are just simple reminders of your road duties. Drive safely. A bit of a turn of events now to show one thing that you don't have to experience, the repercussions from traffic violations. Of course, if you don't comply, there is a special police unit you will have to contend with. High visibility clothing, new neon bikes, and a continued commitment to serve, save, and secure. The Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF's fairly new police division is designed to maintain safety on our roadways. It's the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch, PSTEB. As of August 29, 700 members have been deployed across the corporate area and St. Catherine to allow for greater traffic management and safer public spaces. But what exactly is PSTEB? PSTEB is a merger between the, the Motorized Patrol Division and the Traffic Division. And what has caused that is because of the rampant um, dispersal disregard for the usage of the road. Apart from that, we realize that we need strength of personnel on the roadways to deter some of the things that are happening. And what of the branch's roles and responsibilities? Our mandate is really to cover as much intersections and corridors as possible to, to ensure that the offenders, where the offenders desist from doing the regular things that they used to do. Every corner you turn in a half a tree area, in Walton Park, down by East Avenue, where we have the one way. We have presence there to ensure that the rules of the road is maintained. When you come out of Portmore, for example, or people come from the country, and they come into um, Marcus Garvey, and they diverge in East Avenue. Once it's East Avenue, there's somebody there directing traffic, pulling traffic out, so that it doesn't back up back onto Marcus Garvey. And the police is always there for guidance. So if they don't know where to go from there, we're there to show you. And with their bright neon yellow uniforms and similarly colored bikes, the PSTEP members are hard to miss. The division has also been attracting attention and commendations for its sustained presence on the roadways and its role in restoring public safety, reducing crime and disorder, and improving public trust in the police. But the truth is that we have been getting a lot of complaints. On a daily basis, you see taxi men. You will see them lined up in lines coming down. We have people honking horn to show their appreciation. People are able to tell us by Twitter or other social media how much they appreciate us. They're able to go home and tempt their family, etc. And uh, all it takes is for us to just be present. As the JCF continues its work, the public is being asked for full cooperation. I just want to say to the public that 
peace step is new, but policing is not new. And uh, we are here to maintain the peace, just want to work with us and to ensure that we have a free flow of traffic in the corporate area. Peace step is just one example of the JCF working to serve, protect and reassure with courtesy, integrity and respect for the rights of all. For the first time in history, both the 2020 Jamaica Gospel Song and Festival Song competitions will be hosted online. And guess what? The winners will be selected by none other than you, John Public. The top 10 finalists for both competitions have already been released and are currently circulating on local and diaspora airwaves. Look out for the finals of the Festival Song Competition on TVJ on July 26 and the finals of the Gospel Song Competition on CBM on August 2. While you wait, go ahead and download and or stream the top 10 festival songs on Spotify, Deezer, Amazon Music, Apple Music and Tidal. Resilient and strong, let's celebrate Jamaica 58. So we've been talking much about things in life that are sure and unavoidable for the most part. We want to share some more challenges that may be inevitable, but can be overcome. Here goes. Number one, making mistakes. Many of life's moves are new, which means as we go along, we are prone to make mistakes. The good thing is that we can shape those mistakes into remarkable lessons and building blocks for the future. Number two, conflicts. We all have varying personalities and will never truly get along with everyone we know. This means that conflicts are likely to arise. If the relationship is important, try talking it out. If that doesn't work, visit the Justice Ministry's Mediation and Conflict Resolution Center. Number three, aging. Getting old is something that happens to all of us. So as of this moment, make the most of life and do things to the best of your ability so that aging is not done with regret. When we learn to accept the things we cannot change, it will help us to become better individuals and work on our own personal development. And even as we develop ourselves, we're working to make our nation the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. I really hope that those who are listening to my voice will take an introspection of themselves and check out how they have been operating the motorcycle. Are you operating with an helmet, an elbow pad, a knee pad, a jacket, a shoulder pad? Are you wearing shoes instead of slippers? Have you removed the mirrors from the motorcycles? Obedience better than sacrifice to the right thing. Are you going to ensure that you buckle up in the motor vehicle and the persons in the motor vehicle behind your back, your passengers, are they buckle up? Are you going to ensure that? Are you going to give yourself adequate time to reach your destiny so that you don't have to be in any ears, so that you don't help to clog up the health sector? Nobody should be going to the hospitals because of traffic crashes. Nobody. They are preventable, they are avoidable. We can make better choice than that. Today's show ends here, but as always, there's more information from us coming your way tomorrow. But until then, past episodes can be seen through our YouTube channel. And while you're at the convenience of the internet, visit the JIS website and follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter pages. From all of us here, enjoy the rest of the evening. I'm Theodore Henry. See you soon. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service. The Voice of Jamaica.